and welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna give you guys some random updates that have come up what's been going on with you guys stuff that's in the media and then we'll cover kind of what happened with Aaron Goodwin on Ghost Adventures Aftershocks on the Riddle House so the first thing that I've been wanting to talk to you guys about that it's been going on for a while I just haven't really been sure when to bring it up if it's appropriate to bring it up at first I wasn't sure if it was kind of an accurate piece of data but then after the last couple of weeks, I was like, I have to, I have to tell everybody about this. So, you know, I've been doing Ghost Girl Diaries, like, consistently on YouTube for, like, a year. And I've had you guys message me consistently, either about stuff that we bring up for topics, or if you guys are going through random things, you message me and say, hey, this is the paranormal thing going on in my life, what should I do? Or, this is going on in my life, and when it first started happening, I was shocked because I would usually get more than one person that would message me about like a similar incident that was going on in their life. And then every week I would hear from you guys and it'd be like four or five people and then six or seven people and it's always similar messages or you guys reach out to me on social media regarding similar incidences that you're going through. And all of you guys, you know, obviously live in different areas, sometimes we're even in different parts of the world and you guys are messaging me about similar things that are going on in each of your lives. The point of me bringing this up is, I just feel like as a community, I mean, I couldn't do it without you guys, that we are kind of bringing up like data and statistics of, I don't know, the energy of the earth or the energy of humans or whatever, maybe it's when you're involved with paranormal, that all of us are going through similar things at the exact same time. This doesn't even include statistics of some of you guys that don't message me or don't reach out to me, which is understandable. Some people want to keep their life, you know, personal and private, and that's cool too. I just think what we're creating and what we're doing together by communicating with each other is we're kind of creating something really awesome and beautiful, and it's figuring out that the earth and the energy of the earth affects all of us in similar circumstances in different areas of the earth. You know, at first I guess I thought it was a coincidence, but now I know it isn't. There's been too many times where the same scenario has happened and I'll get like six to 10, you know, emails, messages from you guys, or you'll reach out to me on social media. And it's just really cool to me. Like last week there were people that were going through energy vampire stuff and roommate issues a bunch of you messaged me and I'm just like I have to tell everybody this because this is really important so anyway keep reaching out to me keep messaging me um, keep chatting on you know leave me comments on the videos I love hearing from you guys about all of that stuff and um, let's move on to the next topic okay I had a random message from Kevin Manis with the Dybbuk box if you guys remember Kevin was on Ghost Adventures Aftershocks with the Dybbuk box and I talked about we didn't understand what was going on. He was in Zach's museum in the basement reciting this like really weird, um, I don't know, poem or something. And then when I put that out there, like you guys are like the ghost girl army and then you go find stuff and then you send me the links back and uh, you know, like we work together. It's not a solo event here, you know, because we're all here to find out the truth in paranormal. That's partially the reason why I do things the way I do. Some people may not like that, you know, I call production out as it is, especially since I work in the paranormal production side. But that's for if someone watches one of these episodes that I do, and they were a part of whatever it is I'm calling out, they reach out to me and let me know the truth of what's going on. So that's exactly what Kevin did. 
Kevin saw the episode of me talking to you guys about like we couldn't figure out what was happening. We saw him reciting this really weird poem in the basement. Then we ended up finding out that he had it memorized because we weren't sure if he was under possession or what was happening. So Kevin did message me. I did tell him, you know, that I appreciated him coming forward and um, I thought that I would give this to the paranormal community because I'm still all about being authentic and raw. So here's what Kevin said. Kevin told me that he was in fact reciting a speech and that speech is the audio that we had linked before. If you didn't see that episode, I will link it below in the description box. Kevin said that he'd been left alone in Zach's museum in the basement for hours. He said that he was down there forever, no one had been communicating with him. I don't even think he knew that he was really being filmed that whole time. And he said that he got really bored. He had a speech that night that he had to give. I'm not sure if it was in um, Los Angeles or, or where it was and he said that he was bored so the only thing he could think to do was recite his speech and practice it because he does do kind of verbal storytelling. He said that he had no idea that the post-production was going to be edited the way that it was. He felt a little vulnerable because it did make him look kind of creepy or scary or whatever. So Kevin, thank you for coming forward. If you watch this video, I appreciate everybody that comes forward. And um, you know, this guys is just a lesson with paranormal production that I've been teaching you all along is that um, you never know what's going to happen with post production. and. I assume Kevin wasn't, you know, if he was in the basement by himself, he wasn't going to have a full conversation and, and be like, okay, well, I'm bored, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to recite my speech. So he probably just started reciting his speech. He's not going to have a, a conversation with himself. And then Zach and the guys probably had him mic'd up. Most people that don't work in production all the time forget if you're mic'd up. And he probably started reciting his speech and Zach and the guys were like, what is this? And he was using like the English accent. So then everyone was like, this is creepy and scary. What's going on? So anyway, it could be both sides. We could throw in the towel with Zach and say you guys should have asked him what was going on before it was edited. But then again, does it look good for TV because it's weird and wacky? Sure it's gonna sell and I mean I'm not calling Zach out as being fraudulent I've worked with him the dude's really re legit but um, this was a big boo-boo like they should have asked Kevin what he was doing first and that's okay it is what it is so anyway let's just clear up Kevin's name give him you know his credibility back he came forward let us know what the real deal was so Kevin you're awesome kudos to you for letting us know thank you for that all right, next um, random funny update that I don't know if you guys saw. I linked a YouTube video somebody sent me, and it was this band that's out of Shepherdstown, and they are kind of like, it's a little twangy, and they're basically having these huge lyrics about Ghosts of Shepherdstown and how fake it is, and... One of the lyrics I think even says we don't want to scare the ghosts off now or something like that because they've given us jobs to do ghost tours. Oh my gosh, it is so funny. I talked to I, who I think is one of the musicians in the band, so I'm not sure if he is um, the bassist or the guitarist or, or what, but he um, is basically saying that Shepherdstown, Ghost of Shepherdstown with Nick is totally not accurate, totally not real. Uh, they're making fun of uh, the sheriff that's on there in the song saying that he uh, they're paying th with their tax dollars for um, you know this ghost crew to come in and, and it's haunted and oh my gosh you guys please watch it I'm gonna link the video down here you're going to die it is so funny and after you watch it leave me comments below on what you think about it because I think it's so funny okay next Okay, Amy, um, you know, and Adam, Kindred Spirits, I think is still doing awesome. But last episode, apparently there, I didn't actually watch this newest last episode. I don't have a lot of time to watch TV and YouTube. Um, but Amy, I guess there was some shadow on the wall. You guys may have seen this. And apparently a lot of people called her out, her and Adam. Um, on one hand, I guess they had people saying that they had fraudulent stuff that... 
they were trying to fake stuff and that's why this um, shadow wasn't called out. And then on the other hand, there were like fans saying, you guys missed the shadow, like you guys messed up. So I couldn't believe Amy came forward on social media and she apologized basically to everybody. She said that, um, you know, she issued a formal apology basically on social media saying she admitted that it was one of their, I think it was either a camera tech or an audio tech. And she said that basically, you know, fraudulent ghost hunting or paranormal shows make her sick to her stomach. So I have huge kudos for her. Like I just, I think that is so awesome. It's the very first time I have ever heard of someone that's been accused of being fraudulent coming out and saying, no, it wasn't fake. It was a post-production mess up. It was one of our texts. I mean, acknowledging that there is possibly falsification in this industry, no one does that because all they're usually worried about is the money part. So she took the bull by the horns, says it's not fraudulent, apologized, and that was it. Damn, she is badass. And Amy gets huge props from me not just facing, you know, the fraudulency of being a ghost hunter, but facing the fraudulency of being fake for a production company. And she's like, nope, it wasn't fraudulent. I'm sorry. It was it was just a mess up in post-production. So Amy's awesome. Amy's super awesome. She, she won a really big kudos spot in my book. Speaking of Amy and Adam, they just announced a bunch of new locations on their Strange Escapes tour. And Grant Wilson's usually involved. Sometimes Jason Hawes is involved. Um, it's www.strange-escapes.com. If you guys are on the East Coast, or I mean, they go all over the United States, watch for their events. They're always adding events and stuff, and they're really cool events. So if you get a chance to go, that would be a really cool event for you guys to, you know, experience meeting some of the paranormal celebrities in the industry. Man, did you guys see the supermoon? Like, oh, I thought it was awesome. And, um, you know, last week was really hard. We had the elections and stuff. And you know, always when there's a full moon or a supermoon, emotions are gonna be amplified. Just for future reference, if there's a full moon or a supermoon or whatever, Make sure you try to go outside and just literally take like a moon bath. Make sure you're fully clothed and stuff. Astrologers believe that like a moon bath is really good for healing spiritual energy. And actually I was on Snapchat for a little bit last night because all of us were outside um, under the moon for a while. But it's a really good time to like re-energize your crystals. Like I told you guys if you need something to um, keep positive energy or soak up negative energy, if you recharge your crystals in the moon, it's once again healing and sometimes it'll purge like anything negative that's around, like even your salt lamps. I had my salt lamps in the moon last night too. Just cause you never know who's around or who's gonna be projecting um, that into, you know, crystals or things in your house or even at work. So next time there's a full moon, super moon, make sure you're outside because it will totally reamp you guys. You feel like a new person. Random side note, um, I just thought I would throw this out there. Um, Dave Schrader, who is one of my dearest friends still to this day, um, his mother has been very sick for a while with cancer. I don't know if you guys follow him from Darkness Radio. Um, his mother, sadly, like a couple weeks ago or maybe a week ago, was taken off um, doing treatments for cancer and then they put her in hospice care. She's not doing very well and he's been posting updates and stuff, but she's basically in her, um, in her phase where she's transitioning to the other side. She's getting ready to transition. So if there's any way that you guys could get on Facebook or Twitter Give Dave, Darkness Dave, um, I think it's Darkness Dave is how you find him, a shout out and, or comment on his stuff, you know, and just say my condolences or, or say you're going to throw a prayer out for him and his family and his mom. That would mean a lot to me. We all know how it is when, you know, you have a family member that's sick or crosses over and it's a really struggling time for him right now. So I just thought I would ask you guys to do that um, just because I know our community is really kind and we try to keep all the positive energy. So if you guys could do that for me, I would so appreciate it because Dave is a wonderful human being and um, it's so hard to have a family member transition.
Ghost Adventures Aftershocks, The Riddle House. We had a little kerfunkle with Aaron fighting with the psychic on set. It was kind of awkward. It was really hard to watch. So what happened? So you guys all like blew me up that night on social media. Oh my God, can you believe Aaron did this? Uh, what was happening? All this stuff. I've had some of you guys on social media and, and YouTube saying that Aaron's not cleansing and his soul is tainted and he's possessed by a demon. Come on, guys. Would you want someone saying that about you? Like, have some respect. Let's come back together. Let's get respectful. Nobody's possessed here. He's just chosen a path that I would never suggest anyone else taking, but he's a human and he has that prerogative to make that choice. So if you could tell, like, Aaron sat down with the psychic. He was okay with her at first. And then she started telling him, I gave you this crystal. It was meant to be for cleansing, for healing. You need to cleanse yourself. And then Aaron says that he threw the crystal out. The psychic gets upset. She says, well, I used that for 20 years or whatever to cleanse people in their homes and their places. And it was a good crystal. It was meant for, uh, you know, healing purposes. And Aaron's like, well, I don't know where it came from. And that crystal could, I don't know what it was used for, so of course I'm going to throw it out. It's not a personal issue. I do that with everybody. And then that really upset the psychic, and then she asked Zach if she could slap Aaron, and Zach's like, go for it. And then the psychic gets up to go hit Aaron. I don't think she was going to actually hit him, but the next thing that happened was the psychic walked up to Aaron, went to put her hand on his face, and before that happened, he jumped up and ran away, started saying that she made him mad. In fact, he said, you pissed me off. You really pissed me off. And then it became this like horrible tension in the room. And like, I can only imagine the day they were filming that it turned to like awkward silence and everybody's like, I bet Jay and Billy were in the back like, Aaron says he's never cleansed, he doesn't cleanse himself, he doesn't rid energies of himself. He refuses to go to, you know, a preacher or a priest or anything to get cleansed and um, is that safe? Why is he doing that? Those are your questions. First of all, no, I don't think it's safe at all. Um, it's hard to not get in the discussion of religion with paranormal because paranormal is religion. Do you know what I mean? Like. Um, you know, atheist, agnostic, you you know, it depends on people's perspective, but most of the time they'll say they don't believe in the dead or the other side, so then why would they believe in paranormal? So then we don't have to discuss, you know, worrying about atheist, agnostic. I've told you guys when it comes to religion, I kind of take things that I like out of each religion and then interpret into my own, like the archangels are from Catholicism and... Um, you know, actual priests that do exorcisms are Catholic. That's the only religion that's really been honest and truthful up front about the other side ghost demons existing. So it's hard to not put some Catholic in your perspective of paranormal. But you can take a bunch of different religions and, and make it your own. And we've seen on ghost adventures where they've been out of town, Zach and the guys, and they'll be like, oh, we thought we had some really dark energy, so we made the decision to go in and cleanse through a priest. Well, you're not always going to find a priest that you need at that exact moment that's your particular, whatever your decision of religion is. And so it sounds like all of these times they've gone in to do cleansing, Aaron has never been a part of it. I don't know why he's doing that, to be honest with you. I do know for a fact that Aaron, when he was married with his wife, I think they were very strict Catholic. Um, if you watch the very first original Ghost Adventure documentary, he talks about his religion, Zach talks about his religion, and that's actually why Aaron quit at first, um, was because of, you know, being Catholic, and it wasn't accepted into his marriage or his, his religion or family or whatever. So I don't know why he's doing it like this. I do get concerned about Aaron. He has brought something home from every single investigation they have done on Ghost Adventures, even if it was just like a stick or a rock and he's taken it into his house. If you guys watch him on Instagram, he is never home. He is constantly lurking like Las Vegas Boulevard or a hotel or at somebody else's house 
Or sometimes he'll even go stay on a hotel on the Strip. Usually it's like the Cosmopolitan on the Strip. And honestly, I really think that it's because his house is so haunted that he cannot handle being there. That's really what I truly believe. And if you guys would even watch, like, he has a lot of artwork that he does. Um, the first Friday that's in Vegas, he goes there sometimes to sell his artwork that's in the art district. I've talked about it before. If you've ever seen any of Aaron's art, sometimes he'll sell it at, um, like, if they go do some sort of a paranormal event. It's very dark. He says that it's always his dreams. He always has really dark dreams. So I get concerned about him just because I don't think he sleeps very well. Really, that's just the truth. Not getting cleansed or, you know, I've told you guys doing salt baths or breathing in salt water, going to the ocean, using crystals around your house. Salt lamps will not only, um, you know, protrude positive energy, but it will soak up the negative ener energy. So salt is very healing. Um, you know, I've told you guys certain things I personally can't do, which is like eating animal products, stuff like that. He's not taking care of himself properly at all, even if it's not going to a priest. Like that is kind of extreme. Like there has to be a point, which Zach has been pulled out of bed a few times. We can see why he's been cleansed, obviously. But I think that Aaron's going through some stuff that nobody really knows about. As far as the psychic and him having that problem, I will be honest and tell you that I know mo a lot of you guys ask me if I have worked with Aaron, and I have. And only a few times have I worked with Aaron. Um, his energy is very strange. I can't explain it. Um, when I walk up to Aaron, I can feel like a force field around him, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, and it's very repelling. I don't know if it's just, I thought for a while it was just me as a person, but it sounds like other people feel that way, and that could be the energy that's surrounding him or whatever else, and or maybe attachments, we don't really know. Um, but I guess the way I can explain it is, have you ever taken a magnet, and there's like a positive and negative side to a magnet? And usually when you, t when you stick the positive and negative side to a magnet, they'll click and they, and they match up, right? If you flip the one side over and have the negative and negative side of magnets, they repel each other, right? You guys have probably experienced that before. That's how Aaron's energy feels to me when I'm around him. It's like I can't get close to him because it's like I feel like I'm just bouncing off of whatever that like energy wall is. So it's really strange. Now as far as Aaron stating that he threw her crystal away and you know she was mad at him for throwing it away, he actually had a very valid point with that. And Zach agreed and so do I. The valid point with that is I would say a majority of the paranormal community has good intentions or fans have good intentions. But there is a few people out there that could be practicing Wiccan, black magic. There's different parts of Wiccanism, which is like white magic, which is the good magic. The gray zone is in the middle. And then black witches, which are usually black magic. And then you have hoodoo and voodoo, which sometimes those are related to animal sacrifices. So you don't know if someone's bringing you a gift, especially something spiritual like a crystal or some, or a gem or whatever, those could be infused with that person's energy and especially darkness or negativity. So it can be really scary accepting a gift from someone like that. So I actually do support Aaron not accepting that crystal as a gift. And like Aaron and Zach Bull said, we don't accept them from anybody, and I know Billy doesn't either, and they have a valid point with that. And it doesn't have to be a crystal, and that's what sucks about this industry, because I was at Scarefest, and I watched Zach accepting gifts from people, you know, they bring him all kinds of things, from pictures that their kids drew, to holy water, to presents galore. And it's really hard, because you just don't know if somebody did something with that item that could be negative or dark. So it, it is really scary accepting a gift from somebody with their energy on it. You just don't know what's going to happen or what their intentions are, especially if it's like a malicious intent. Gifts in the paranormal industry are hard to accept. They really are. 
And I think in one of Zach's books, it was at the Stanley Hotel. I think it was one of the events that I was helping Dave with. Um, someone brought Zach a picture. It was like, the, I think it was like a painting or something. And this woman handed it to him and Zach was like, oh, thank you, you know, so much. Because this was like back in the day when he kind of first started out. And the woman's like, yeah, it's a picture of you dying or your death or when you're going to die or something really dark like that after Zach had already accepted it. And he like lost his shit on her because it was like, really? Like, you know, it, so it's not you guys. A majority of the paranormal industry has good intentions. There is a small percentage though that you just don't know. So when you're accepting a gift, it can be really complicated because you don't know, is this person, you know, have some sort of, they've cast a spell or is it hoodoo and voodoo? You don't know. And we're so sensitive as paranormal investigators to energy. You just have to be more careful than anything. It's better to be safe than sorry, really, is what it comes down to. Do I agree with Aaron not cleansing himself or, you know, getting blessed or getting all of the energy removed? No, I don't agree with that at all. Um, that is a really good way to cause severe, that is a really good way to cause severe depression, attachments, um, possibly oppression, possession. I don't think that's Aaron's problem. I think that he could definitely get some sort of oppression down the road if he doesn't try to fix what's going on or contain what's going on. But the strange thing that Zach said is from a scientific standpoint, Aaron is kind of conducting an experiment with himself by not getting cleansed or removing these things from him or taking energy home from that location with him. It is kind of an experiment. So I guess if that's how they're looking at it, it's his prerogative. No one should put anybody down for what they make their decision with in this industry. Um, you know, I think it's scary. I wouldn't do it, but I will not condone him for it. I will not condone him for it. He needs to do what he thinks is the best decision. And I guess in this case, that is what he's chosen to do. My experiences with energies and people in general can be intense. There was a guy that was at the supermarket one time. He was actually in a wheelchair. Um, it was like a rented wheelchair and it looked like he was fairly young and I was like, oh man, it looks like you know, he's had an accident. And he was ordering something from the deli and I was near him at the deli. And as I am standing there, I was probably about a foot away from him. All of a sudden I started getting this horrible, horrible neck pain where I thought like someone had like chopped my neck off or like hurt my neck or something. I just couldn't explain it. And in fact, I got to the point where I almost couldn't wait to get food from the deli because it was hurting so bad and I couldn't figure out why. And then as I was standing there kind of like this, trying to, you know, get my bearings back, the guy, he's younger, he's probably in his 20s, he looks over at me and says, I just broke my back, I was in this really bad accident, and, um, you know, today was the first day I got my neck brace off. And I was like, and he, and I was like, your neck brace? And he was like, I broke my neck and it actually just finally healed. He's like, I just saw you holding your neck and I, I know what neck pain's about, I'm so sorry. And I was like... How did I feel his energy? You know, that's being an empath is like tapping into that. Anytime my family's around, especially like you can definitely start reading off of them with their energy. So I can see why Aaron and the psychic had a problem. Psychics have a lot of energy that they emit naturally. And you know, we've obviously seen that she can actually communicate with the other side through the actual, you know, episode that she was on with Ghost Adventures. But then Aaron has all this negativity surrounding him, which is going to make him intense, right? So if someone comes up to him, now with the psychic, I assume she's probably more on the light side or positive side. She has a very bubbly personality. She's chatty. And so when the light side comes up to someone that's in the dark side, which is Aaron, Aaron ran, right? The dark or darkness doesn't like positivity or things of the light. So I'm assuming their energy had like a total clash. Even at the end of the conversation, if you guys noticed, the psychic said, well, can I hug you at least and, you know, apologize or whatever. And they hugged each other and Aaron was like kind of repulsive. Like he doesn't want to get near her. And it's just that energy clash. We've all had somebody that you don't want to be around, you know, when you're having that energy clash. How do you protect yourself from it? 
Um, you can invisible, you can imagine like a bubble or like an invisible shield. I actually have friends that will like, they, they imagine like a light switch in their head and they turn the light switch on and turn the light switch off and that's how you shield up and then you shield down. And basically what you do, it's kind of giving yourself an invisible energy barrier and you have to keep yourself protected. So the two, color, so the two colors that I use for that is gold and pink because those are both of my favorite colors. So if I feel like I need to be protected, I just kind of imagine myself enveloped in like a bubble really quick. And I feel like then I can repulse the energy away that I don't want to be around or be affected by. It's stuff that I've told you guys about before. If you feel like you have negativity, you gotta cleanse yourself one way or another, which we've gone over before. Um, but the biggest thing is I would not ever suggest anybody lives like Aaron does and I just hope that eventually he'll figure out that it's not the right way to do things as an investigator. But we shouldn't judge him. He has seen a lot of stuff. He's uh, been put in some really dark, scary situations that Zach usually forces him to be in. So he needs to just be left alone if that's what he wants to experience and feel then that's what he needs to go through as a paranormal investigator. Hopefully this answered all of your questions. I love hearing from you guys. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Please give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you leave me good comments below. I love hearing from you guys, especially about these topics, and I will catch you guys next time. We're back from dead.